Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this episode we're gonna talk about this little gadget here. This is a Xiao module with Renaissance microcontroller RA4M1. In this quick video we're gonna have a look at the technical specifications and I'm going to explain you the exact steps how to get started and use this little board with Arduino IDE and flash Arduino sketches on it. This module is powered by Renaissance RA4M1 uh, microcontroller based on 32-bit ARM Cortex-M4 architecture. There are 19 GPIO pins in total, 8 of which are on the back of the board. Out of these 19 pins, 14 are capable of doing analog to digital conversion. There are 2 I2C buses, 2 UART buses and 2 SPI buses. The board offers 4 operating modes with power consumption as low as 45 micro amperes in deep sleep and supports lithium battery charge management. The battery can be attached to the back on the board where there are dedicated pads. The microcontroller runs at 48 megahertz. It has 32 kilobytes of RAM and 256 kilobytes of flash memory. There are three different LEDs that can be used for indication. On the left side of the USB-C connector there is a power LED, on the right side there is a user LED and between the two buttons on the bottom there is an RGB LED. Speaking about the buttons, we have a reset and a boot button. This Renaissance microcontroller in the Seed Studio Xiao module has four advantages. It has a 14-bit analog to digital converter, 12-bit digital to analog converter, there is a CAN bus which means that you can use it for diagnostics of cars and other vehicles, and it has built-in hardware encryption. All motors from the CL family are famous for the tiny size. There is no exception for the CL RA4M1, the dimensions are 21 by 70.8 millimeters. Like all CL modules, this CL RA4M1 comes with castellated holes, which gives you the possibility to either use surface mount technology and incorporate the module on a printed circuit board, for example how I did with the Xiao RP2040 on this Anavi MacroPad 12 mechanical keyboard, or to use um, true hole components, male header pins, uh, to solder them and to use this Xiao module on a breadboard for quick prototyping. So here I am on my soldering desk and I'm going to solder the male header pins on both sides of the Xiao RA4M one module. I'm using an old trick. Uh, I'm helping myself with a breadboard. This way the male header pins will stay in place while I'm soldering them. Due to the miniature size of the module I have to be careful while soldering the headers uh, because it's important not to stick the different pins together and also not to stick uh, the solder to the shield or other components of the board. In terms of software, the major advantage of the Xiao uh, RA4M1 uh, board is that it is fully compatible with the Arduino system, which means that with minimal configurations in Arduino IDE, you can compile and uh, upload Arduino sketches. Let me show you how to do it. Step number one is to download Arduino IDE. This is basically the editor where you compile and upload Arduino sketches. It works with Microsoft Windows, Mac OS and Linux and it's free. Actually, it's not just free, it's open source software product. I'm a Linux user, so here you see how I've downloaded and installed Arduino IDE version 2.3.5 on Ubuntu 24.04, which is a Linux distribution. The second step is to launch the Arduino IDE application and add RA4M1 board package to it. Go to File, Preferences and there fill in additional board manager URLs by adding the following URL to it. Actually the URL is available in the description of the video so you can uh, do copy and paste. Alternatively you can visit the Seed Studio Getting Started page and get the same URL from there. Step number three is to open board manager. You can do this from the menu on the left or to navigate to tools board. In the search box, type in the keyword RA4M1. From the results, select seed renaissance board and click install. Alternatively, in the search box, you can also type in the keyword renaissance as I did in the video. 
The installation will take a while, please wait patiently until it completes. Finally, the last step, number four, is to select the board and the port. So in Arduino IDE, you have to select Xiao RA4M1, which will appear after the previous steps, and to select the port, which is assigned by the operating system to it. In the Arduino ecosystem, the applications are called Arduino sketches. So in order to make sure that everything that I did so far is successful and the board has been successfully set up, I need to test it with a simple application or in other words, a simple Arduino sketch. Because of this, in Arduino IDE, I'm going to open file examples and from basics, I'm going to select the blink example. After that, from the uh, left upper corner of Arduino IDE, I'm going to click the button to compile it. Let's fast forward the compilation in the video. Compiling the source code is one thing, but in order to test it, we need to upload it. So I press the button next to the compile button again on the left upper corner of Arduino IDE, but unfortunately, the upload of the firmware failed. Here's a closer look at the uh, error message in the output of Arduino IDE. Obviously, there is a problem accessing the DFU device. According to the documentation from Seed Studio, sometimes using the wrong program can cause the Xiao model to lose its port and not function correctly. Because of that, you can put it in bootloader mode. There are two methods to do this. Method number one is to press and hold the boot button on the Xiao RA4M1 without releasing it. Method two is to keep the boot button pressed and then connect to the computer via the data cable. After reading this in the user's menu, I decided to give it a try because probably my board was having trouble accessing the bootloader mode. As you can see, I tried these methods, but they didn't work out. It was another problem. A problem that affects Linux users. Arduino IDE is cross-platform, which means that you can use these same steps on Microsoft Windows, on macOS, or Linux distributions. However, Linux users pay attention because there is one additional step that you have to do in order to get it working. This is based on my experience with Ubuntu 24.04 LTS release. So in Linux, there is a user space system called UDEF. It enables the operating system administrator to register user space handlers for events, including for peripheral devices, such as, in this case, the Xiao uh, RA4M1 uh, board. So in the video, you can see how I'm opening a terminal and I'm creating a special UDEF rule for this particular microcontroller. Actually, while typing in the rule, I made a typo, which caused some confusion, as you can see in the video. So in order to avoid this, I highly recommend you to have a look at the description of the video and just copy and paste the exact commands that I've already figured out for you. As I mentioned, I tested this on Ubuntu 24.04. If you're using another Linux distribution, please leave a comment below to share your experience. After this successful troubleshooting, let's go back to the previous chapter and do the upload again. This time, we're gonna upload the Arduino sketch successfully. You can monitor the progress of the upload of the firmware to the board in the output of Arduino IDE. This is a super simple Arduino sketch. As a result, we have a blinking LED. This is the user LED on the right side of the USB-C connector on the Xiao RA4M1 board. Here is a short demonstration in which you can see how this yellow user LED blinks on every second. So at the end of this video, we can summarize that Xiao RA4M1 is one of the very first development boards with this Renesas ARM Cortex-M4 microcontroller. Um, this board has a very compact thumb size design and it's fully compatible with Arduino IDE and the whole Arduino ecosystem. The microcontroller in this Xiao RA4M1 module is made by the Japanese company Renesas. This company is specialized in the automotive industry where it's widely popular because it makes a lot of chips for cars. However, Renesas is now expanding and entering new markets. So this is one of the very first boards uh, for do-it-yourself projects and makers with Renesas microcontroller. Obviously, because of the relation of Renesas with the automotive industry, it supports Canvas. However, the disadvantage is that there are no wireless connectivity options such as Bluetooth, Matter or Wi-Fi. However, this board 
is um, an option to be used in applications where you typically use Raspberry Pi, Pico or Arduino uh, boards with microchip uh, microcontrollers. So I highly recommend you to explore it further and to have a look at it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful. If so, please hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.